Hi friends! Today I am going to be talking about black snail patterns number 0218. These are a pair of men's trousers suitable for 1830 to 1860 and there are two versions available in the pattern, a wide fitting leg and a tight fitting leg. Today I will be showing you how I made the wide fitting leg. Spoiler alert, I really love this pattern. I will give a proper review as to why at the end of the video, but if you're just looking for a quick should I buy this pattern or shouldn't I, I highly recommend it. This video is not intended to replace the pattern pieces or instructions, and you won't be able to follow along and make your own trousers without the pattern, so I will link that below in case you're interested in making them. What I will do here is show you my thought process while making up this pattern, where I made little changes to the finishing techniques to make these come together faster, because I am more of a casual historical costumer instead of an actual costume historian, and these are for my husband who will not attend many events, so I don't want to spend too much time on them. And I will show you where I had trouble understanding the pattern instructions, because if you follow me at all, you know that I am absolutely incompetent when it comes to understanding patterns and I am definitely a beginner when it comes to using patterns. So with that in mind, let's get started. This is the fabric I'm going to be using. It is curtains from the thrift store and the tag says 100% cotton. I downloaded and printed the PDF pattern off of Etsy and the lovely Catherine helped me put it together. Now that I have everything taped together, I went ahead and measured my husband and cut out a size 5848 based on mostly his waist measurements because that's what lined up the best and I figured I could always take the hip in if that didn't measure up exactly. So that is the size I went ahead and cut out but here on this leg piece it says to cut and extend seven inches my husband is a teeny tiny hobbit man and he's pretty short so instead of doing that I measured his inseam and compared it to this pattern piece and instead I just cut this piece a little extra long instead of extending by the whole seven inches. How about no? So this is the back piece. I don't see a green line marked anywhere. Um, so I'm just gonna assume it's this line marked fold and hope for the best. So I have got all of my pattern pieces cut. I have read the instructions quite a few times. I think I understand most of it. Maybe. We'll find out. I'm just going to take it one piece at a time and hope for the best. There are quite a few pieces that I still don't understand. So hopefully as I do them, they make a little more sense. And let's give this a go. All right, here we go. First stitches. Just kidding, I'm too scared because this is a curve. I have to put my phone down. So the instructions say overcast and join the raw edges and then sew five buttonholes. And since this part is not visible, I decided to just do that finishing by machine for the sake of time. And I accidentally set my marks for these buttonholes about a quarter inch farther this way than I should have. I don't think it's going to be an issue, but if it is, I do have enough fabric to redo it and I will let you guys know, but I think it should be okay. So I am a dingus. It wants you to use one piece from the buttonhole stay, but the rest from the fly facing. And I wondered why this had only had me cut out one lining piece from the buttonholes, the button catch, 
And then it was talking about the inner lining when I didn't. When this doesn't call for you to cut out inner lining of the button catch, it has you cut out inner lining of the fly. So I just used in the inner lining. I just, I just used it. I used all buttonhole pieces. And then I got down here and realized I was wrong. So it's fine. I have enough to recut more button stay pieces, but for this, use one from the buttonhole stay and the rest from the fly pieces. You're probably not a dingus like me. That probably made sense to you, but it did not make sense to me. So now I gotta fix it. I'd even wondered why it was that the fly piece was the piece with the buttonholes marked on it when it didn't make sense that way with how it was going in my head. Well, there's the answer. I was just wrong. Okay, new pieces cut out and we're moving forward. Instead of sewing the edges of the pocket bag where it meets the front of the pants with a prick stitch, I did a row of understitching purely because um, laziness and time and I don't want to sew anything by hand yet. Okay, fold the pocket bag in half. I'm good here. This turn in the short seam allowances, this is where I get completely lost. And I have no idea what this is saying. So my solution was to just close the pocket bag, overcast it, and hope for the best. Before sewing any of the long seams together, I've just gone ahead and serged them. Um, I did it by machine because it's not going to be visible, so I don't particularly care that much. And I've just done this because it's easier to finish when they're separate like this than it is once it's all put together. So I will sew the seams and press them apart and then it will already be nice and finished. So it is the next day. I got some good work done last night and the majority of the pants, like the, I don't know, the main pantsy part of the pants are all together. So I was able to try them on my husband and personally, my modern eye really wants to bring them in a little bit at the seat, but I actually think they fit perfectly for the period, if that makes sense. So I am not gonna bring in that extra little bit there. They fit him perfectly right out of the package. That's amazing. So that's really great. And I was right, I did not need to add all of that extra length to the pattern. He is a tiny hobbit man and it fit him just like this. So I will go ahead and work on the waistband and the finishing and stuff now. Since I was able to fit this on him, I went ahead and did a second line of stitching here just to reinforce the seat because I am always paranoid about pants splitting. So that isn't called for in the pattern, but I did go ahead and do that. And this is kind of my own slapdash solution to not understanding the pocket thing. I'm just going to overcast this by hand, cut these seam allowances down and serge them and press them apart because I really don't have time to try and ask for help to figure out this pocket thing. I just, I want to get this done before the new baby comes. And it's not that big of a deal to me because it's not like these are pants he's going to wear every day. So sorry, I'm no help there. I just did not understand that part of the instructions at all. And then I just sewed the seam kind of like normal, just making sure to catch here on top of everything that was finished, not leaving any raw edges to poke out on this side. I just angled the seam a bit to make sure that I was catching here and then finishing at the 5 8 So I do have an, a little bit of extra here. The next part says, turn in the seam allowance at the button, stay facing, and fell stitch. Instead of fell stitching here, 
I did a stitch in the ditch. I figured that with, you know, discreet stitch colors, since this was going to be covered up by the fly anyway, nobody would see it. And I think that's a fair assessment. So, you know, just another way to save time. For this J shape attachment thing, I did double check the pictures on the pattern and it looks like they have top stitching there or at least visible hand stitching. So I'm gonna go ahead and just top stitch that on my machine. I, in my foolishness, did not attach the saddle earlier up here when it said it did, because for some reason I thought it was telling me to connect the seat of the pants together. I don't know why that's why my brain went there when this is literally labeled saddle, but I did, so I'm going to go ahead and put that on now and then put the gusset on, of course, continuing like that. I am kind of used to turning darts towards the back seam, but this one just based on this doodle kind of looks like it's pressed towards the side seams. I'm gonna go ahead and keep it facing towards the back seam though, just because that's what I'm comfortable with. I'll let you know if that comes back to bite me in the butt. So I went ahead and did the same treatment to these pieces that I've been doing to the others, where I bound the edges by machine before sewing them just to make it easy peasy finished later. And I went ahead and unpicked some of my back seam so that I could put these pieces in. And then we'll be back on track. I have gone ahead and sewn that on and pressed and finished my seams towards the saddle and then sewed the seat back up and we are back on track. I really don't know how I missed that. Looking back, the instructions are so obvious and so clear and it just went right over my head until I got to the part talking about the gusset. So I don't know how I missed it, but here we are. This says to fold the gusset in half and I just went ahead and gave it a little press like that so that it would be easier to work with. Ta-da! I know this sounds a little weird but I just saw a sewing hack on Facebook for making straps and I kind of want to try it. So what I've done is I have taken this pattern piece and put it on a fold here and I'm just going to follow this line up to the fold, but cut the rest of it the same way, but not cut into this section here. Just keep this line going straight. Like so. I have no idea if this is gonna work or not. This is completely experimental for me, but we're gonna try it. Then I took the raw edges and folded them to the wrong side and gave them a press. At the center, I have folded it in half with the raw edges towards the inside, and I'm just going to run a line of stitches right there. So I've got my line of stitches here, and I'm going to kind of open it up so it looks kind of like a bow tie, and then press these edges together and then line everything up. Look at how neat and crisp that is. That looks so much nicer than if I had sewn two pieces right sides together and then turned it out. Like it's so pointy. So now I'm just going to Stick a little pin here to, you know, hold that in place. Flip this over and kind of open everything up. And so five eighths from the edge, the same way I would have if I was just doing the pattern pieces as normal. But then when I turn everything right side out, I'll have this nice sharp edge which then I can 
close with some top stitches when I attach them to the pants. Okay, so here is my front pocket, and I think y'all saw that I did not understand these pocket instructions, but now that I'm getting ready to attach the waistband, I just had this free-floating unfinished seam here, and here on the side seam, I just finished that by covering it with my seam stitches. But here, I'm going to be adding the waistband, and there'd still be quite a bit of left over here. So what I did to take care of that was turn it under at an angle. You can see here, I could have done it straight, but I did it at an angle because I thought it looked nice. And so turned it under, grabbed a hold of it with the other part of my pocket, pulled open the top layer, and then you can see here, caught with a row of stitches through both layers of the unfinished stuff, and just finished my stitches right at the corner, going back and forth to reinforce them a lot. And then when I open it back up, it looks like this, and I can reinforce this either by hand or with some top stitches, and that just gives it a nice clean look. This is not what the pattern calls for, but this is my way of accommodating for the fact that I just could not understand the pattern instructions because I'm terrible at reading patterns. Once again, I have gone ahead and finished by stitching in the ditch because I felt like it wouldn't be very noticeable here and I'm pretty satisfied with that. But all of the rest of the finishing, like the buttonholes here and at the front and the hem, I will be doing by hand because that's stuff that will be visible and is much harder to fake. So this calls for an angled buttonhole at the pockets, and I do think that's a feature that looks really cool. But if I were going to make these again, especially since I made them out of such a loosely woven fabric, I would make my buttonhole on the grain of the fabric because then it's less likely to unravel. This is also my first time trying to sew buttonholes by hand, so they're not the neatest or most secure anyway. So I think just putting the buttonholes on the straight grain instead of the angle would have made them turn out a little bit better. Then I sewed on all of my buttons. The pattern calls for fabric covered buttons, but I had these wooden ones in my stash and again wanted to save time, so I just opted to use those instead. I also didn't realize until just now that I maybe sort of kind of actually finished this part of the pocket the right way. Obviously I didn't do it on this side because I just angled my seam here, but right here is actually, I think, what they wanted me to do. So yay for me. Here are the finished pants. I really like the way they look. My husband likes the way they look, and he says they are very comfortable. I didn't end up needing all of the length that the pattern says to slash and add seven inches. I didn't end up even needing the length that I had added on to the bottom other than to turn in because my husband is just that short. So if you're making these, keep that in mind. You may not need to add as much as the pattern calls for. The pockets are super deep, very big, hold so much, so he's really pleased with that. And for the back, I accidentally ordered the wrong size clasp for the straps, so right now they're just being held at the right size with a pin. I will have to order a new one and go back and fix that later, but other than that, the pants are done and I adore them.
Like I said before, I really like this pattern and I highly recommend it. The pieces come together really well. It comes together relatively quickly, especially with all the places that I hacked it to avoid hand sewing. And it fit my husband perfectly right out of the package without any alterations other than the length. And he is your pretty average shaped guy. I will definitely be using this pattern to make other period appropriate trousers again, but my husband actually liked them so much and he said they were so comfortable that he wants me to make more in neutral colors to wear in his day to day life. One thing I really love about this pattern is how size adjustable these are. There are multiple different places where small waist adjustments can be made without actually having to alter them and throughout the year my husband gains or loses a few pounds here and there so anything that cuts down on the more tedious sewing like alterations or repairs is great in my book because then I can spend more time doing fun sewing like new stuff. I wouldn't necessarily label this pattern as beginner friendly, but it is definitely beginner attainable, especially if you have health. That one step with the pockets that I did not understand and I didn't bother to get help with, but that is because I am kind of on a time crunch trying to get these done before the baby comes and not because I think it's some insurmountable task that nobody can understand. I think if I had reached out for help, I would have been able to get it. So just in summary, the pattern pieces aren't too complicated. The instructions are understandable to even me who is incompetent with patterns. The fit on these is very nice and easy to alter if needed. And they are comfortable and size adjustable. The long and short of it is that I really love this pattern and I totally recommend it. So like I said earlier, I will link it below in case you are interested in purchasing for yourself. I hope this video was helpful to you and helps you cut down on the time it takes to put these trousers together if you're not 100% married to historical practices or that it helps you avoid the mistakes that I made purely due to my own obliviousness. Bye friends.